Good morning, grade 11. So, we have a lesson understanding data and ways to systematically collect data. So, under niya is the qualitative research design. So, ito yung i-discuss ko uh, sa ngayon, the qualitative research design. So, again, what is qualitative? So, when we say qualitative, uh, written, uh, narrative, uh, through writing. So, yun siya. Walang basis ng numbers and numerical uh, kahit na ano. Or tables or graphs, figures. Ang tangi lang sa kanya is the qualitative, is the uh, written uh, discussion or written uh, results ang ginagawa sa kanya. So, we have the definition of research design. So, is a type of inquiry within qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods approach. So, when we say quantitative, ito naman yung uh, numbers, numerical, ito yung may basis. How many are answering the questions number one? So, yun siya. May basis siya, may bilang. And then, when we say mixed methods, uh, both qualitative and quantitative ang ginagamit dito. So, aside of having um, tables and graphs and figures, so, meron ka rin namang uh, brief uh, summary or explanation or the interpretation of your data. And then, uh, this is according to Denzel and Lincoln year 2011. It also includes the collection of data research timeline and respondents used so the following are types of qualitative research design which could be used as technique in collecting and analyzing data so if your research is used a qualitative design so ito yung susundin ninyo basta ang ginamit ninyo is the qualitative research so if not at hindi naman kailangan sa inyong research study ang qualitative at ang kailangan niya is quantitative so you don't need to follow uh, to follow the types of qualitative design so first is the case study so analysis of persons groups events decisions periods policies institutions or other systems that are studied holistically by one or more methods, so it investigates a phenomenon within its real-life context. So, bihira yung gumagamit ng case study pagdating sa research study. Kasi, uh, malayo ang hindi kailangan ng case study sa research. Depende nga yan sa topic ninyo. So, when we say case study, uh, deep uh, investigative ang kailangan dito. Kasi uh, pinag-aaralan yung maigi ang um, bawat detalye or uh, bawat uh, aspects ng inyong study. So, case study yung tinutukoy dito. Uh, ano man ang gawin ninyo kung uh, kailangan sa kanya is case study, malanimang uh, pag research at pag investiga so may experimental dito, so yun ang gagamitin ninyo. So, medyo bihira lang yung gumagamit ng case study pagdating sa qualitative research. So, meron silang advantages, more understanding on complex issue, apply variety of methodologies and sources to investigate a research problem, extend experience or add strength to what is already known through previous research and then most widely used by social scientists. So, medyo... Mahirap gamitin ang case study pagdating sa research study ninyo. Kaya huwag kayong uh, pipili ng isang topic or title na gagamitin ninyo kung ang pipiliin ninyo ay case study. Kasi uh, minim, uh, limit lang yung time na meron kayo at kailangan kasi dito is mahaba-haba at maraming oras. So, hindi ka kayanin ng uh, isang semester ang um, case study kung ito man ang pipiliin ninyo. So, meron din naman siyang mga disadvantages. Intense exposure to the study. So, minsan nagiging bias tayo na minsan gusto natin ito yung lumabas na result pero hindi ito yung uh, nagiging outcome. So, may, nagiging bias tayo minsan pagdating sa case study. Matapos lang yung 
paper ninyo. So, ito na. Ito na lang. Ito na lang na ito. So, hindi pa pwede yun. So, for example, ito ay example of uh, by Acosta, Amy, and Alexander Acosta, year 2016. The title is Seeing Through a Magnifying Lens, a Qualitative Inquiry of K-12 Readiness of Faculty Members from Higher Education Institutions in the Philippines. So, adaptation ito ng uh, year 12 program from the basic education so nagbago ang ating kurikulum. So, matinding pag-aaral ang ginawa dito magkaroon lang tayo ng batas na ang ating education is hanggang grade 12 siya. So, hanggang senior high school siya. So, ang ginamit dito is yung case study. So, mahaba-habang pag-aaral. Okay? So, in your case hindi nyo naman siya uh, po pwedeng gamitin kasi limit lang yung time natin. Isang semester lang siya. So, bihira. Second is the ethnography. Study of cultural patterns of people and their perspective as a group. It also involves their beliefs, values, and attitudes. So, if your topic is about the beliefs, values, and attitudes of a person. So, ethnography ang gagamitin ninyo. Kasi, isusulat nyo doon yung, yung result, yung outcome nila. So, ano bang topic ang po pwede or hinahanapan ng beliefs, values, and attitudes. So, depende yan sa inyo kung saan kayo interesado. So, ayan yung example. Third is the ground theory. It is a development of theory directly based and grounded in data collected by the researcher. So, it is an approach that generates and modifies a theory. For example, you are, uh, your study is about the history of Holy Trinity School. So, paano nagsimula? Sino-sino yung mga tao na involved nung sinisimula nitong school na to? So, yun yung tinatawag na ground theory. Ibig sabihin, Um, matagal na siya nag appear at nagkakaroon ng development. So, from uh, preschooler pa lang, so ngayon meron na tayong senior high school. So, his history yung tinutukoy dito. Then, uh, in conducting your uh, research, so paano kayo makakakuha ng info and data, so you have to go through an interview. So, sino yung mga taong i-interview mo? So, sino yung nagtayo nito? Uh, sino yung may-ari or sino yung mga naging teachers before. So, tatanungin mo sila kung anong development until now, yung, yung progress ng school from then and now. So, yun yung uh, study pagdating sa ground theory. So, kung gusto nyo ng ganong study, uh, matagal-tagal din itong gawin dahil hahanapin nyo yung mga taong involved dito and then if they willing to to uh, conduct an interview, so, pwede yun. So, yung mga ganong topic ang, ang naka-under by the ground theory. Ayan. Fourth is the narrative inquiry. So, these are tales of experience or imagination and come natu naturally to human beings. So, Narrative inquiry, ano yung papwede dito? Papwede ang itapit nyo dito is about uh, your love life. Uh, y kasi diba, your experience. So, naturally comes to human being. So, ano gusto nyo may, uh, malaman? If, if, the, if a student is in a relationship, so what will happen to his or her academic performances? So, ano yung magiging effect nun? Uh, negative ba? So, pipili, pipili kayo if positive effect or the negative effect. So, kung pinili nyo naman ng positive effect, so, focus lang kayo sa positive. And then, kung negative naman, uh, kung hindi naman maganda na yung estudyante are in a relationship, anong epekto nito sa pag-aaral mo, sa, sa iyong academic performances. So, under niya is the narrative inquiry. Kasi ikukwento mo doon, isasalaysay mo doon. Fifth, 
is the phenomenology. A phenomenon is something you experience on earth as a person. It is a sensory experience that makes you perceive or understand things that naturally occur in your life, such as death, joy, friendship, caregiving, defeat, victory, and the like. So, for example, is yung victory. So, yung pagiging successful. Um, anong topic kaya ang pupwede when it comes to uh, victory? So, pupwedeng uh, yung mga graduate ng college. So, ano yung feeling? So, ang tawag sa kanila is phenomenology. Kasi, uh, nandun yung understanding bakit ka nagsasaya, bakit ka malungkot. So, may dahilan. So, ang tawag sa kanila, under nila is the phenomenology. So, if your topic is something like this, so, you need to choose uh, phenomenology for your research uh, study. So, comparing to ethnography, phenomeno phenomenology aims at getting a true understanding of an individual's experience for the same person's realistic dealings with hard facts of life. So, ito yung usual na uh, ginagamit uh, for the research kasi na-experience ng bawat isa, di ba? Uh, nandun yung feeling nyo na nagtagumpay kayo, uh, tinalo kayo or malungkot kayo. So, ito yung usual na ginagamit. Yung phenomenology. Kasi uh, in your age, ito yung uh, nangyayari sa inyo in real life. So, friendship, uh, ano yung effects ng friendship pagdating sa pag-aaral ninyo. So, po pwede yan. Uh, good ba? Or bad ba? So, Depende yan sa pag-aaral ninyo at dun sa hinahanap ninyo. So, sometimes you are asking uh, questions in yourself na bakit ganito, ganyan, ganyan. So, po pwede nyo siyang isama for your SOP, your statement of the problem. Wherein, yun yung hahanapan mo ng sagot, yun yung hahanapan mo ng remedies, solution, and then you have to recommend something kasi may natutunan ka dun sa research mo. So, yun yung phenomenology. At sa iba, ganun din naman. So, mag-create kayo ng questions na relate, na gusto nyo hanapan ng solusyon. Kaya, sa paggawa nyo ng topic or title, dapat doon kayo sa interesado ninyo. Para at the end of your research, may natutunan kayo at pwede ninyong uh, i-apply or ikwento sa iba na ito yung result. Kasi lalo ngayon, year 2021 na tayo. So, meron man silang, uh, meron mang nag-aral nito before, pero hindi naman, na, relate na lang sila. So, hindi na masyadong um, ganun yung same result ang mangyayari. Kasi, eto na kayo ngayon, pinag-aaralan nyo na siya. Okay? So, so, nagbigay ako ng different examples lecture sa inyo. So, makikita nyo doon at mababasa nyo kung ano yung differences nila. So, continuation lang ito ng first topic natin which is the uh, understanding eto. Understanding data and ways to systematically collect data. So, under niya is the qualitative research design, which is yun yung tinakin natin for today. And then, yung susunod na lesson, under pa rin siya ng understanding data and ways to systematically uh, collect data. So, po, pwede kayong mamili doon kung anong uh, gagamitin ninyo instrumentations for your research design. And I hope uh, naintindihan niyo siya kasi tig kakapraso lang naman sila. Yet, marami silang under, pero yung explanation is very minimal lang. So, depende yan. If your topic is under by qualitative research, of course, you need to choose the following uh, research or the qualitative research design. So, po, pwede kayong mamili dyan. So, if not, if not um, qualitative research design ang gagamitin ninyo, so, check natin yung quantitative naman. And then, if both quality and quantity ang gagamitin niyo, of course, you need to choose mixed methods. Mixed methods ang tawag sa kanila. And then, i-apply niyo yan for your chapter 3. Uh, Nakasaan doon, naka-instruct doon.
yung inyong mga instrumentation na gagamitin. So, that's it. And then, um, if you have concerns and uh, questions regarding uh, research design, just approach me and uh, pag-usapan natin kung nagugulang kayo. So, that's it. That's all. Thank you and I hope you really listen to this kasi in your grade 12 practical research to ito pa rin naman yung babalik-balikan lang natin. But that, uh, by that time, gagawa naman na kayo. For now, for the discussion lang tayo. So, thank you and God bless you always.